I am very, very happy to be here. It brings me Simcha on the Chanukah, where we're supposed to be happy. It's a great schut, it's a great honor and a privilege to see you guys again. I didn't have, I didn't think that I'll have a chance, right, a week after, to see again these holy faces and holy souls, and it's a tremendous joy for me. So, first of all, I want to thank you. Many years ago, exactly <coughs> at this time of the year, we were at a war. And again, we find ourselves in a war. And since you know best all about this war, more so probably than we do, I'd like to share with you some thoughts about this war. We will share some ideas. We will share some fascinating questions and answers in the Halakha. And we will see what we can come out with it, that we can take with us to carry over out of Hanukkah into our lives. So let's present our first case. When the whole thing started in Simchat Torah, you know that some places it took two and three days for the Israeli army to go in and conquer, reconquer, take back our places. In one of the places, Simchat Torah was Shabbat, and then the following day on Sunday, the terrorists, the Hamas, the Machshimam, were still there in their kibbutz. It's okay, my bang vatsu. Till say and a son who simhato and who atun. It's a in a honyota taizanam hatso, Hamas de ho and the Tungva and I povin. A hum Hamas de Aga Hunotsu, Simhato, a hum here acona, minit a Sahaniho is an umhatso a boga long over long vet is Hamas de ho. He has a two I say do he ho hat some town to do I say do. It's a ho he, it a banham teale. Sunday, it's a bad need to Sipatora, he had a Sunday in Huato, Yomishon Niato, Hamasi Maxima, no, right? So Galud, what he had in the Huato. At one point, there was a family that the father <coughs> had to take shelter in one house, and the family, the mother and kids, were in the other house. And in Sunday morning, Isuhab, the mother suddenly saw that the Tfilin of the father is with her. So she asked her son, we're going to call him Uven, Uven, I want you to cross the street and go to daddy and give him his tefillin. <laughs> Sunday morning, when the Hamas were still there, there was a family that the mother and kids are in the house, and the father mm-hmm. had to go to a different house yesterday when the whole thing started, and he found himself, they were separated. Mm-hmm. Sunday morning, the mother realized that the tefillin of the husband is with her. So she says to her son, go quickly, cross the street and go over to where daddy is hiding and give him the tefillin. You realize, for the kid to cross the street, it's suicidal. The Hamas are out there with guns, and if they see him, they're going to shoot him. Is the kid allowed to listen to his mother? Is the mother allowed to send the kid? For what? For tfidin? Can you risk your life for tfidin? I <laughs> 
Anutun sepang sepa sepa tu hilang apa tefin piting asal. Alah tefin ada piah hilang pola ngah tinggal ni awak nak lagi baca. Apa tu le? Malah mah kita tota nak kila tu. Hitu bang dengan mana tu? Anu in tefin tu apa tu apa piring ada solding tu halah nungzu ya matarah ini dem. Apa yang tu anu tu saya tercepat dengan mana angai ding tu matarah ini dem. Before we answer, I want to tell you a story. There was a grandfather, an old grandfather. That once came to say to sit a whole day, to spend a day with his daughter and with the grandchildren. He wanted to spend a day with him. And he came in the morning, and he noticed that his daughter called one of her daughters, and she says to her, Rachel, come help me in the kitchen one second. And Rachel starts yelling, Why me? Why me? You always call me. Why are you calling me? Call Chaim. So she calls Chaim. <coughs> Chaim, come help me in the kitchen. Chaim says, Why are you calling me? You always call me. Call Moshe. A little later, an hour later, she says, Moshe, can you please come? I want you to take out the garbage. And Moshe starts yelling, Why me? You always call me. Call Leah. Half an hour later, Leah, can you come help me for a second? I need your help. Ima, you always call me. Why are you calling me? You always call me. Call one of the other brothers or sisters. Why are you calling me? And this went on and on and on the whole day. Nikah ni he, si tu aku sen do apa wihat hilang dingin vin. Kau sih mukat saya dihilang kan. Tapi asal pukat ni he, atu teh ho building agak je ati. Agak je nahe cepang ho sih sih he umu baca. Ayah le anu he nikah ni he cepang ho kau macam aku baca. Macam nikah ni. Ani aku sen le sen tak semat macam ni macam. Kau ini aku baca. Hong ini lang boy ni hong kita hobi teh dalam teh ati. Hendu kei bola pada usir le kei ngai boy mida kat 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 sopi teh kat sultan yang teh ati. Adang harus kau kira, ah harus kau kisah kita lo, kau kau ngai, kau kau pada usir kau bosan, ni kau kau yang kalau kau kau tuh orang kau kalau kau tuh kau tengah tiket nanti. Adang harus kau mahu kau kira, harus nyawat dia mahu saya kira. Tiap hari tak kau yang susah bond si kau apa biasa ni, lo patam patam aku kira, lo kau bosan ni kau kau yang kau kau bayar orang orang aku ni mahu mahu kau mahu kau minti ini. Hei, so nak kisah kita yang berat. The grandfather was very very upset all day long. Why me? Why me? Why me? At night they were all eating dinner. And he says to his family, I want to tell you a story. You know that I'm a Holocaust survivor. But I never told you how I survived. I want to tell you. I thought, Apu pa hin so amu pa na hi. Alung ahang biya say inda sa apu pao hin. Yeah, so anna niya kwam ding wa hi. Tu si mahat ka say pi diyo na hi eh. Kay hi na hi diyo tu, Holocaust ako na hung hing do ka hi eh. Hello, cause we had so okay. My bang, my zudami is asang asang ana tau hindi. Na, hindi wala ako na hong hindi dohat kahit ez gal gal tu bang kausit na la ako na. Yaya asken katusim kat kasi pidiu itida na hindi gal pia ako na hong hindi dohat yaya um kahiya itida itida na lai mo na nong masahong um tekit kahiya kita hindi kahit sa pidiu na hindi ez. So he told his family when the Nazi Yimach Shema came to our town, they separated the women and the little kids and the men who are strong and can work. They told all the women and children, they have to go on one train, and the men will go on a different train. Now, they don't, didn't know that the women and kids will die, and the men will stay around for a while because they can work. They didn't know that. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to say it. Israel tahu yang si kaum masa seiva pasal pasal ho ahad natong tena isi situ munkhadau msaova nume ilat sepang ho situ munkhadau msaova pasal si situ train kana kitol dinga si mawa ama ho si situ natong dia kita video he aja nume ho ilat sepang ho natong tena udah si situ train kat pato dia ati dinga apu dia he tadi so ibat ati dia tu kau masa nak kaya sapu he so he told his family I was a very little kid small kid young and I went with my mother and suddenly my mother saw Oi! I have daddy's feeling with me. So she said to me, Go, get out of the train, go to the other train where daddy is and give him the feeling. And this was very, very dangerous. There are Nazi officers with guns, machine guns out there, and if they see me, they will shoot. Kena pernah lah tu kaya yang hin, kanu yang hin, kanu hin sangat sangat an gel doh itu. Kapal teflin anak pun nak lahir. Ya, atas kap kanu ini soal ini soalin, 
Silam napa tefin ng kapi ng hiyate. Ife na la din munso. Apo ang yeng yaya hiyale na di sepa yos na kapi gam di kapi di hiyas tuan tuan pa sa sa pangpa sa na. Thal 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 kita yso kaya yso sa kaya sa puso ane ulah hiya na. Thal kita yso kaya kapi di hiya yso. Ay bangat ano e tefin yso hiyan lang napa kapi ti na solid. So I quickly took the tefin from my mother and I went out of the train. It was very dangerous, but I don't know how. Until today, I don't know why they didn't shoot me. And I crossed over and I came to my father's train and I started yelling, Daddy, 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 Daddy! And he found me. And he started hugging me and kissing me. He says, What are you doing here? And he said, Mommy sent me with a tefillin to give you. So he hugged me. He said, Thank you very much. And he said, Go fast. Go back fast to Mommy before they catch you. I love him. I love him. So I started running to the doors of the train and Ed, I got to the train to the doors? They closed the doors and it was too late and I got stuck with my father. I didn't know at that time, but that's what saved my life. Because my mother and all my brothers and sisters, they all died. But because I came to my father, I stayed alive. Kana hello wangin kaso piti ho si si to kanu yong train kana ti si si abon na ti gamtan na kay kahindo tayo. So he says to his family, so do you know why I am here today? Because when my mother said, go quickly, give the filling to daddy, I didn't say, why me? Why me? Give it to one of my other brothers, give it my sisters. No, I ran quickly to do what my mother asked and that's why I'm here. Yeah, so, vele out, eh, so he says to his grandchildren, you know why you are here? Because many, many years ago, me, your grandfather, I didn't ask my mother, why me, why me, why me? When your father or your mother asks you to do something, you have to want to do it. But now we have to ask a question. Can you risk your life for tefillin? We know that there are three big, big, big sins. And they are immorality, killing someone, or idol worship, that one has to be willing to give over his life. But for everything else, one doesn't have to give over his life. What do you say? Was the kid right? The grandfather who was a kid many years ago when he got out of the train and risked his life. There were Nazis out there. Or in our story, back down south. Is he allowed to listen to his mother and go outside to risk his life to give his father the tefillin? Even now, he alle zola te sepozo anya ulai ana bol pa so tefillin ding zala ain khua zana aga pi ezat pa aga hit bolo ai so til bol so mutar ni dina ain khua zana tefillin aga pi ezat es tua in zai se pa dalam langa til so pa so na so na so tong pa so anu te se so tefet la angai angai ding so mutar ahi ni dia. What do you say? Iti galo mangan. Not allowed. Anyone thinks it's okay?
האם היותר הבינה, מה יותר חשוב, כאילו, מה יותר חשוב בשביל הילד? אז לכן היא שלחה, אז לכן הוא צריך לעשות את זה. אבל הוא גייב לה פרמישן להריסק את החיים? אז כיוון שהאימא אוהבת אותו, אז אם זה היה כל כך מסוכן, אז היא לא היה שולח אותה. שולח אותה. כמו שאתה אומר שהיא נכון? אולי היא נכון? Maybe the mother's wrong. She is assessing things. It was a miracle that the Nazis did the shooting. Who says you're right to do that? Can you risk your kid's life for the mitzvah of Tfilim? Everybody knows. There are Nazi officers with machine guns out there. Very dangerous. Can we find any source in the Torah to a similar action? Anything similar to this? Not too long ago we read about it. Yaakov Avinu and Yosef. Yaakov Avinu says to his son, I want you to go check out how your brothers are doing. Yosef goes. But Yosef knew that the brothers decreed that he must die. He has a status of a pursuer and he has to die. So why in the world did Yosef go to the brothers? It's dangerous! Who gave him permission? So, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going If you say that, you take away the whole question. But we need to find out, to look at what our forefathers did, did and try to figure out how we can learn from it. If we don't have Ruach HaKodesh, so we can't rely on the stories in the Torah. If it's Ruach HaKodesh and he is a Navi, he is a prophet, no problem. But if we bring it down to regular people and they conducted themselves based on the Halachot of the Torah, who gave him permission? That's a beautiful answer. <coughs> But we have to look at it in our eyes that we are not prophets. Can we use that story? The Primagadim asks this question. He has a sefer on the Torah called Tevat Gome. And there he asks this question. He says, Who gave yourself permission? who gave Yaakov permission to send his son. And he says, <coughs> at the time of Yosef HaTzadik, the mitzvah of Kibud Av was very degraded in the eyes of people. Mm-hmm. Didn't give it, people didn't give it enough respect. And when a person, a great person, Adam Gadol, a great person, a sage, sees that you need to strengthen a certain mitzvah, he can risk his life even with that mitzvah. בריא מגדים קטין, פוסק להם תחת אומה, אמה אין תורה צונה פירוש הפינה לאחד ואומת. האמונה זה פתיע סודם תיאלה. אמה אוכנה היא, יוסף הצדיק תכנה היא, נו לפז אבו אלדין קטין מצווה פעי, נסתה אנא מונום לא אוהד, נסתה אנא סוענים אוהד. אז נו לפז אבו אלדין מצווה קטין פעי, נסוענים בעשר זה דבר עצו, סוסר נתי נדין עצו, הייתי אמה לאמה הנחו עתו דעות הידין דין מונגי אבי זין זונלה, הנחו עצן תהידין דין מונגי זונלה, הייתי מצווה פסו ובריא נדין הפן עלה תהיה הידין. זה אינם תהיה תורה, אנחנו נמצא אחת, תוקדת נתי דין ההיידית. It's called nullifying a positive commandment. It's not transgressing something, it's just not doing a mitzvah. Yet, Hashem punishes in a time of wrath of Hashem. Hashem punishes 
a person for not wanting to do this mitzvah. Heading to Halakha Nuzuya, Gemara Masred Menachona, a daf son Yelachana. For you. If Tia son, if Tik sonam Tiale, Micha son, Talit Aki Alebo, a Hawaki him, I so. Talit Aki Aloa Hile, a Hawaki him, I love it. Kawikitza on my own, I love it. No, a punpa in bow. We learn from that Gemara okay. that when there is a time of wrath of Hashem, mm-hmm. anger of Hashem, Hashem punishes even for nullifying a positive mitzvah. Okay. Is there a greater time of a wrath than the Holocaust? the Holocaust no, and yeah. two weeks ago, it's the same. Two months ago, it's the same thing. Is there a greater time of wrath of Hashem? Based on that, could be, maybe, maybe that the mother would be allowed to send her kid with that feeling. And in tracted manahot, we also learn the one who puts on that filin will have longevity. So maybe it cancels one out. And one hand it's very dangerous, on the other hand you get longevity from this mitzvah, maybe they cancel each other out, maybe. He was in Ebu. First of all, it was in Simchat Torah. It was in Shabbat. When he ran to the other place. He was he got stuck there and he couldn't come back to his house. And it was dangerous. So he didn't do anything wrong. Now he got stuck the following day, which you have to put on Tfirin without the Tfirin. But on Shabbat he wasn't able to do it. What's that? We're not asking. We're asking, are you allowed to go and risk your life to give him that fitting? Okay. He doesn't have to risk his life. The question is, is he allowed to? Okay. The same question will be on the father. If he calls us and says, can I cross the street and go? The same question will be, can I risk my life in order to do this? The kid is also getting the mitzvah of kibudav. On the way, he's adding another mitzvah. Okay. <coughs> That's a wonderful point. Wonderful point. <laughs> wonderful point. I want to share with you another case, very interesting, that happened on the first day of the war. Down south, in one of the hospitals, the first siren. <coughs> One of the nurses in the hospital, as soon as she heard the siren, she ran away. She was trained that you stay with the old person that you take care of, that you can't leave. Or if you're treating a, a, a patient that can be wheeled, you take him with you to the safe place. But you don't run away by yourself. But she was so afraid, she was in shock, she ran away by herself. Now the management comes and asks, should we fire her? 
What do you say? Would you like to have a nurse like that on the staff? What do you say? He's scared, but like, I think that she You know how many times they train them? You don't leave the patients. So many times they did these drills, again and again and again and again. But when the first siren came, oh, she was so afraid, she ran away. Scary. It's the first time she was a siren. Very, very scary. She said, I lost control. What's that? So you want to fire her? Let's get rid of her. No, She knows how to be a nurse. She studied many years and she's a good nurse. But she got afraid. What's that? Not when you're hired to do a certain job. Imagine you are the bodyguard of the prime minister, of the president. And when somebody comes to shoot, you say, bye bye, and you run away. My life comes first. Not when you're hired to do a job. A captain of a ship, of a ship, is supposed to be the last one if the ship drowns. Can it be? Water comes in, the ship slowly goes down, and the captain says, "You're on your own. I'll see you later." And he has 500 people there, and he goes fast first. Can it be? As a captain, his job description is to stay until the end. He has to be the last one. If you don't want that job, don't take it. Do something else. We'll say to the nurse, if you don't want this job, go do something else. But the job description says, and we trained her many times, you have to stay with the patients. Just something? No, I think there was actually a story about the captain. He left. In Italy, about 10 years ago, the Italian no, ship. It was, it was about um, students going on a trip, and then the captain left first, and all the, all the students died. There was no I think about 10 years ago, there was an Italian ship that was drowning. I don't remember how many um, people were on it, passengers, maybe 150, and the captain was the first one to jump out. He was sued. You know, allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. But what about our nurse? So we're firing her? We're getting rid of her? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody agrees? <laughs> he wants to keep her. But, but this is a job description. Would you like a person that's reading you or your loved one? <laughs> we did. We trained her so many times, but when was the real thing came, she got scared. You fire her. Everybody's firing her. Fire, get rid of her. <laughs> Let's look what the Torah says. Parashat Shmot, Perek Dalet, Pasuk Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you're holding a staff, you're holding a stick, throw it down. He does. What happens when he throws it down? It turns into a snake. It turns into a snake. It's the answer by Parashat Shmot, and I'm going to go to the end. If you want to go to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to go to the end. I'm going to go to the end. What does the Torah say right after it turned to a snake? What happened? Vayanos Moshe Mipanav. Moshe Rabbeinu ran away. Excuse me? You're talking to Hashem? What are you afraid? 
This is the first siren. You're afraid? You're talking to Hashem? Who asked this question? Ha'amekdava? Let me see. And his language is, this is a wonder about our master Moshe. Where are you running to? And what are you running from? Think about it. He's talking to Hashem and he's running over there. Hashem is not there. Is Hashem not there? And if Hashem wants to protect you, He can protect you here from 50 snakes. And if He doesn't want to protect you, you're not going to be protected when you run there. What are you doing? Says the Hamek Davar. <laughs> That's the answer of the Amek Davar. Wow. Amek Davar says, What are you so surprised? Moshe Abenu is a man of God, but he's a man, he's a human being. And when a human being sees a snake suddenly, it's very, very scary. So you ran away? You see, it's natural. Even to Moshe Abenu. So what do you want from the nurse? You get two points. <laughs> I have another proof from Gemara, Masechet Shabbat. Page 49a. The Gemara tells a story. There was a person by the name of Elisha Baal Knafaim. Elisha, who has wings. What kind of funny name is that? The Gemara tells a story. In the time of the Romans, the Romans decreed that one is not allowed to put tefillin on. And one who puts tefillin, they will puncture his head. They will kill him. Elisha said, I don't care. I'm not afraid of the Romans. And he went to the middle of town and he took out his tefillin and he put his tefillin on. He started putting that fill in and started to pray in the middle of town. Suddenly, he saw a Roman soldier. And the Roman soldier is coming close to him, so he starts running. And he runs and he runs and he runs and he runs, and the soldier is running faster. And he gets really close to him, so Elisha takes off the tefillin and he puts it under his jacket, and he continues to run, and the soldier catches him. Mm-hmm. As soon as the soldier caught him, he said, What do you have there? What do you have there in the jacket? He says, no, that's uh, just wings, wings of a dove. And the soldier says, I don't believe you. Take it out. So he takes it out, and Hashem made a miracle, and the tefillin turned into wings of a dove. And that's why he's called Elisha Baal Knafayim. That's why he's called Elisha with the, the one with the wings, because Hashem made for him this unbelievable miracle with the wings. Harav <coughs> Yashiv asks on this story, Elisha, what happened to you? Ten minutes ago you said, I don't care about the Romans, I'm not afraid. You see the soldier, you start running. When he gets closer, you take that feeling off, you put him in the middle of town. You didn't care. What happened? Harav <coughs> Yashiv Come, is that 
in zota to mi masanga bazala lung ta ngam santa na vai na vai lo is dana tu a tu na sia tu ma e ke masa ai poi sa bing mai mai bo te ti ki sat ki tu a tu te you see when a person sees a roman soldier he scared he forgets about everything that he said oh i don't care about that but you see a roman soldier running after you you're afraid you're scared when you hear the first siren you're afraid ya to mihim hina hi edra pan en sa pe mihim hina bon hi se pai khat se ta thal to acham to pi to hun hun ko na hi ale akit ek ek ki sa ding bon hi me o se ka hi ye ta ya to sa sa yan hun ke ga yo to na us ne to ki ta ding to he sa mong hi i think based on these two sources we have to show a little more mercy than you guys wanted to show the nurse and we can keep her but only if it happens once she comes and she says i apologize I know we trained I'm supposed to stay it's not going to happen again it's the first time when I was afraid if it happens again get rid of her because the other people on the staff stayed so it's possible to stay but she says it only happened once I think we can keep her if it can happen to Moshe Rabbeinu okay. if it can happen to Elisha Baklafai it can also happen to our nurse down south that's what no one again bang to have been kegel down a long khotona na ya khat na to sa thai ding hinan to te ze nam tel mo shere be nu ban akin na akin ze to mang thaya risha ba kana fine tana len ta khat na mi ta khanga um khat ba ban ahun za ahun azam do thaya hi ale to ana me nu chu is that veteran in bolanga e ngai do mo ko bo khel ta ti ale bolanga i da mo hi da ati that's okay gel down a long pal hinte you did very good before and you got two points now i'm going to ask you another question if you don't know it i'm going to take back those two points so be careful you ready <laughs> while the whole thing was going on simkhatura there was a family a father and three kids a boy a boy and a girl the mother wasn't there and he saw the Hamas coming close to his house mm. and everybody knew everything everybody was texting each other and whatsapp they knew exactly what was going on mm. so he has to run away from his house because if he stays they're going to kill them all uh, said, there's a father with three kids two boys and a girl and he sees from the window the terrorists coming close to his house so he has to run away okay gal hunke patni ko atu simkhato ani atu tha khama tin ni mau tsong ta ba ho ba he mi pa to hin e mi mi pa kha to sa pang thum to ani ana omo hi et ana omo ben ama ho si si hi e ama ho ama ho si si hi ina om da hin ta ga ata do le khama tin ni mau tsong pa ho ba ama ho lang hin zona ho hi ta za azam do lo lo le a bona tha ta di tsu amu ho hi ta if he realizes that if he leaves from the main entrance the Hamas are going to kill him so he can only leave through the back door the problem is he can only take one kid with him mm-hmm. and the question is which of the kids should he take there's Ruven and Shimon and there's Rachel two boys and a girl and by the way he likes one of the boys a little more than the other if you think it's a consideration maybe not two boys and a girl he can only take one with him whom should he choose to ahi zam do go ida zam pa hi azam do go ban ahi pia bol dam tia le abol the penta chu acha te thumla kha se se ek pui do the ding dim na mai chu thumla kha bo ki chu pui do the ding pasal ni to no me kha na ya pasal ni hi pasal pasal te ni hi ma ila kha dia ngai do de zo om the cha ai ba ama ho thumla ba kha se se pui do the ding ho koi pen chu pui do ding ham what do you say? It's a tough question. <laughs> Careful, there's two points. Why? <laughs> And why can't he have more children or more offspring through his daughter? Mm-hmm. 
זה לא יהיה אותו משפחה, זה יהיה משפחה אחרת. The name of the family will change, but it is his grandchildren. More than that, more than that. If his son is around and he gets married to someone, those babies will be in an oven of a lady who is not from his family. She is going to be the one taking care of them for nine months. If it's his daughter, it's really an extension of him. Maybe that's more important. He's suggesting that we should keep one of the kids. Because one of the kids one day will get married and he will have children. So it's like an extension of the father. Maybe not. Where are these kids going to grow up? In an oven, in a womb of a lady who's not from the family. Because his kid is going to get married to someone outside of the family. Okay. But if his daughter, his daughter is really an extension of him and she will have, she will get married one day. And it's going to be in her womb, which is an extension of the father. that's just the name you're going to have a family name so what and if you want to save one of the boys which boy do you want to save the one who he likes better or the other one Which one do you save? Uh oh. We need an answer fast. They're coming close. He needs an answer. <laughs> they both fulfill Kibudav, but he likes one of them better. Is that even a consideration? Abichol, the firstborn. Why? Why? We know that the firstborn gets double portion in the inter- inheritance, but why does he get first priority to be saved? What? How, like, how do the children live? How do they like? Do, do they live by uh, like? Do they do lots of mitzvot all the time or? All the same. Three kids, wonderful children. One is a girl, two boys, and he likes one of the boys better. But everything else is equal. Anyone wants to save the girl? Well, we, we don't care about the girl. The girl. The girl. Why? Because she's a girl. And therefore, why does that give a prioritization? <laughs> and therefore, that gives her prioritization to be saved first? I don't know. First, second, so not. Go his own way. No, whether it's this, no, maybe that's the same. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. I'm going Take out with you and escape with one. Maybe the girl, because she's more fragile and she won't be able to fight back as easily as... Nobody will be able to, f- to, to, to fight. <laughs> Many terrorists with guns and their little kids. Nobody's going to... Whoever stays, we know what the end will be. Let's make a difference. Let's say 14 and 15, the boys, and the girl is 13. Or 7 and 8 and 5. 
They're not surviving. We know that. Unfortunately, they're coming with guns. The kids don't know, don't have guns. Because there's only room through the back door to go with one person. And the father is kind of older and he is sick. He can only carry with him one kid. Can't take more. How about the You're trying to give me an advice, but I want a halachic answer. You're trying to get out of the question, but I want to go back into the question. I like what you're saying, but I want to deal with my question. The youngest one. The youngest one. Why? Whoever stays, whoever stays will know what their end will be. It's clear. But you can only save one. So it's not like the older of the kids will be able to be saved if he stays. Whoever stays, <laughs> that will be his end. If it is to me, I'm going to save my elder son. Why? Because my descendant will be counted to my elder son. Why? The other kid, the second, the middle kid, let's say it's a boy, boy and a girl. The middle kid, one day will grow up, will get married, he will have children. It's also your descendants. What's the difference? Why? Where is the source to say that? That's a great chidush, it's a novel thought, but I need a source to say that. <laughs> Lama. And therefore? Do you really think girls are the ones who usually don't yell and scream and they stay more calm than the boys? <laughs> really? I think that's also not less a chidush than what your father said. Not less than a chidush. Great chidush. Not so sure. A bechol. Why is a bechol getting to be saved first? Well, he's the oldest and he knows so how to take care of himself pretty well and also he has more space. No difference between a 7 year old and a 6 year old. Or 14 and 15. They both know how to take care of themselves or they both don't know. It's how to a little sick when you come and I don't think it's but Yitzchak didn't save Yaakov it wasn't a life and death situation that we see that Yitzchak preferred saving Yaakov over Esav where is the source to that? But instead of going back to Parashat Toldot, skip over to Parashat Vayishlach. We just read it not too long ago. Do you remember Parashat Vayishlach? When was that? <laughs> Last week, a few days ago. Yaakov Avinu is going to fight. Esav is getting ready. The Pasuk says, he put the sons of the Shvachot. Okay. And the Shvachot, first. Behind them he put Leah and her children. And all the way in the back, who did we put? Rachel and her kids. Why? Rashi. Three words. Acharon, Acharon, Chaviv. The one who is dear and beloved goes all the way to the back. He wanted to protect him. יעקב אבינו תסמתו צו ברסה מסעה צו אם הוא תעוות בולה המתיה להפתיע המגולה יעקב ונעשב כי למתו פעילים עד שם הכסה פעילים ההט צו אומר הבול בולה צועות נמייתן יצאה תהו המסת צעין אבל אין ליד צעת המסת צעין צעין אין ואכל תו הצפה צעין הפן הכויר ואז אין תוצאים תומה אהיל צעינים אז אין המתיה להצעין הפן האום הוצו נעילות צעין פן היווה ואז אמר הוו ואין דו אין 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 דו אין
Rashi is not alone. Together with Rashi is Tagum Yonatan. He says, Yaakov said, Esav will start fighting. Maybe he's going to kill the ones in, in, who are in the first line. And then I'll get up and I'll fight with him. And these guys in the back will be saved. The Ibn Ezra says, because he loved them more, he put them all the way in the back so they will be maybe able to escape. The Radak says the same thing. You have four Rishonim. These are people from 800, 900, 1000 years ago. This is a mistake that most people do. The Targum Yonatan Ben Uziel that we have in the Torah is not Yonatan Ben Uziel. It's very, very early. Yeah. Very early commentary, but it's not Yonatan Ben Uziel. That's what we say, Targum Yonatan. We don't say Yonatan Ben because really people attribute it to Yonatan Ben but it's not. But it's still very early. Probably, probably, we don't know for sure. It's probably not the Tana. But what was Yaakov Avinu thinking? Because you love Rachel and her kids, you put him all the way in the back. What is that? Is that a reason to save somebody because you love him? Uh, Arav Shteyman Zatzal said an answer which is going to be very <coughs> difficult for you to digest and to accept. Very difficult. But listen to what he said. What's the halacha when you have on the table an apple and a pear? What bracha do you say for the apple? Right. What bracha do you say for the pear? Right. Rav Shteyman question they are both whole complete pears and an apple they both have the same blessing which one do I say the bracha over which one should I choose to start with the one you favor it it's called chaviv the one I like better so the same thing I like my kid better I keep him all the way back to protect him do you believe it? <laughs> no, but you see the such concept in halakha of favorite. <laughs> Favoritism. <laughs> when everything else is equal, all, I, all I'm left, if one of them was well, the seven species, one of them was a gif and one of them was a mozi, <laughs> it's not equal. But if everything is equal, but I like him more, I like the apple more. So I can save him, I can start with him, I can save, I can, that's why Yaakov did it. <laughs> I said this will be very hard to digest and to accept. I said this answer is going to be very hard to digest and to accept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Rav Shteyman said it. Hello. Do 
Arab Shtemon said it, but the truth is hundreds and hundreds of years before him somebody already said exactly the same thing and that is the Ghalbag the Ghalbag many hold that he is the grandson of the Ramban it's one of the Rishonim and he says the same thing and the Ghalbag says if a person has two troubles coming at him he should choose the lesser of the evil he says look at the proof Yaakov Avinu he chose to protect Rachel and her kids because he loved them more. So choose the one which is less harsh for you. And that's exactly what Yaakov Avinu did. <coughs> so Rabbi Steinman, it's not his own Kiddush. The Ralbag said the same thing. Ralbag <coughs> said, so between the two boys we have to choose the one that he likes more we see that there is a proof to that but what about choosing between the boy and the girl? That, there's a Mishnah in Masechet Torayot, Tractate Torayot, page 13, we learn prioritization when saving lives. And the Mishnah says, if you have a Kohen and a Levi who are drowning in the ocean, you have to save the Kohen first. Why? Because he's more holy, he has more mitzvot. We don't have anything against the Levi. We like the Levi, he's a nice guy. But the Kohen has more mitzvot, he goes first. Mm-hmm. What happened if you have a Levi drowning and an Israel? They're both drowning and they're so both nice guys and they're equal. Otherwise, we save the Levi before the Israel because he has more mitzvot. That's what it goes with. And what if it's a boy and a girl? Says the Mishnah, you save the boy. We don't have anything against women. But men have more mitzvot. Women are exempt from time bound positive mitzvot. How many mitzvot, by the way, they're exempt from? Anyone? Any idea? 30 mitzvot. So the man has 613, let's say. She has 583. So just because one has more mitzvot, that's a prioritization. So the boy over the girl, the boy goes. Between the two boys, we see from Yaakov Avinu, potentially we can favorite the person that he, the kid that he likes more. So if it's not here, Unless we'll say that the story with Yaakov Avinu is not the same. Why? Because Yaakov Avinu was very, very strong. Two weeks ago, in Parashat Vayetze, we learned, that when all the shepherds tried to take off the rock, off the well, they weren't able to. And Yaakov Inu came and he said, he did like that, he just did like that, and suddenly the rock, he was very, very strong. So when he was saying, we're going to put these kids first, but then I'm going to fight. I'm going to try to save the rest. Try to save everybody. Our story, the guy is running away, he's not going to fight. So maybe it's not the same. So maybe we should do a lottery between all the kids and decide whom we should save. ไอ้ฮอดิมุนตอกาลาตุตุตุเดนมุนาอิตุอนาโตปาวตอกนะยากอบวินุตุซินตุเตปาเทฮิโลเมเทเฮเอตอีบอลาฮิโลดินะอี
That's the answer. <coughs> if we yeah. can learn from Yaakov, so we go with the kid that he likes best. Boys over <coughs> girls. And the kid that he likes best. If we can't learn from Yaakov, so we'll have to do a lottery. Yeah. <coughs> You know, there was a story about 220 years ago. One of the students of Reb Chaim <coughs> his name was Rabbi Shaya Bardaki. Mm-hmm. He came from Vilna to Israel on a boat. When they came not so far away, a few kilometers, the boat was about to drown. So everybody jumped <coughs> off, and he was there with his two little children, a boy and a girl. So he said, come on my back, and he started swimming. Rabbi Shaya Bardaki. He was on a boat coming okay. to Israel, but the boat started to sink. Mm. So they all jumped out, and he told his boy and girl, "Hop on my back, and I'll swim." And he's swimming, and he's swimming, and he's swimming, and he's swimming, and he's just too tired, he can't continue. So at one point he stops, and he says to his daughter, I am so, so sorry, but I can't continue, you have to get off. The halacha dictates, as we said, a boy comes before a girl. If we'll all continue, all three of us, we will all drown and die. You have to stay here, and I'm going to continue with your brother. And he was crying when he said that. When, when his daughter heard this, she started crying <coughs> and she started yelling. Daddy, daddy, what are you doing? I only have one daddy. I only have one father. You have to save me. Who can save me if not you? Daddy, daddy, you have to save me. And somehow, he got a second wind. He got more cough suddenly. And he says to her, Okay, jump on my back. And he swam, and he swam, and he swam, and he made it to the shore. He got to the beach, and he passed out. And the two kids are there, and he is there, and they're safe. <coughs> A few minutes later, he woke up, he was able to open his eyes, and then he looked at his kids, and he told them, you remember kids, if ever in your life, you will be in a situation, where you feel, there is no more hope, you do what you just did to me, and you start yelling, daddy, daddy, talking to Hashem, who can help me? I only have one father. You must help me. Who can help me? Only you can help me. And when you do that, Hashem will help. And that's a great message for us to take. We don't have to wait till trouble hits. We can always turn to Hashem and say, Daddy, Daddy, you're the only one who can help. And you will. So let's move on now to Kupat Cholim. Did you ever visit Kupat Cholim? You know what Kupat Cholim is like, right? There's a guy, we'll call him Moving. He comes and he waits for the doctor. There's a lot of people around and he's waiting. Suddenly, a guy comes in and he looks very suspicious. 
there's something sticking out from his shirt. And Reuven thinks this is either a bomb or a gun. Reuven did not. I'm not going to be able to get a gun. Dr. Pakwama, I'm going to be able to get a gun. I'm going to be able to get a gun. I'm going to be able to get a gun. I'm going to be able to get a So Reuven is very scared. He goes over to this guy and he says, What do you have there? Take your shirt off. Show me what you have there. What do you have there? The guy says, Leave me alone. What do you want from me? Leave me alone. I let Reuben's ding door. If you're not a pot of the head, never sat there to a head, never sat on a pot of the head, never sat there. Hey, what's up? I need to be making up. Because a boy in Titis and Akila. There was another guy there who was also scared. And he comes over and he says, What do you have there? What do you have there? I don't know. I don't like the way it looks. I think you have a gun there. What do you have there? A bomb? Take it off. I want to, I want to see. And the guy says, Leave me alone, you two guys. What do you want from me? And he pushes them away. Reuven was very scared. Punched this guy in the nose. The guy falls down and he rips his shirt and he takes out a wallet. Uh. Now the guy's lying down bleeding and he says, Look what you did to my shirt. You know how expensive this shirt is? It's a very special shirt. $250. Very expensive. You have to pay. <laughs> I let it up, I let it up. 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 I how come? <laughs> Why doesn't he have to pay? <coughs> you know what you're saying? You know what you're saying now? That if tomorrow I see you in the middle of the street and I don't like the way you look, I'm afraid of you, so I tell you, take off your pants. You have to listen to me? And two minutes later I see him and I said, take off your shirt. And I don't like this and I don't like this. Who is this guy to tell me what to take off and what not? Who is he? Yeah, but what if I am also scared of you and I suspect that you're carrying something and take your shirt off in the middle of the street? Do you have to listen to me? You always have to answer? Anybody who comes close to you? Do you have a proof for what you're saying? What do you say? You want to pay him or not? He should pay. Even, even if like, he's suspicious. And he could possibly carry a bomb and he could like, endanger everyone there. He could have just told the security. And there is no security now. The guy is not here. The security guard is not here. I guess he went to eat his lunch. How does that help us? How does that help us? I don't know. I think I also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, hello, 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 hello,
אז כיוון שהיא לא הצליחה לגלות, אז הוא לא לקח אותו by force. אז בסוף... Was she afraid that Lavan is going to kill her when she stole it? Who gave her permission to steal? It's a different question, was she allowed to steal or not? And in fact, the Zohar HaKadosh says, you know why she died at childbirth when Benjamin was born? Because she caused her father to be upset. Why didn't you ask Godol Hador, his name is Yaakov, he happens to be your husband, and you can ask him for his opinion before you do this? The Zohar HaKadosh says, she caused sorrow to her father, she's not going to be able to raise her son. But that's a different question, was she allowed to do it or not? Fine. But we're asking, are you allowed to do this type of thing? And if you did... אז הוא אומר, אם זה היה רק בן אדם אחד, לא הייתי צריך לגלות. כששתיים, זה כבר משהו. Let's see if you can find a proof to what you're saying in the הלכה. טוב, נתעשה את זה, הלכה המוזור היא דמדה יותר. שולחן ערוך חושן משפט, סימן ש"פ. 380 חושן משפט. They're not exactly witnesses. Witnesses is when you give a testimony in... in the court, in the Beidin. But the Shulchan Aruch Hoshim Mishpat Simen Shin Pei says, if you're going to save someone, you see Reuven chasing after Shimon, and you run and run and run to stop Reuven, and you break some, you jump on somebody's car and you break it, you don't have to pay. Why? Because if we'll tell you, you have to pay, next time, you're going to say, I never saw anything, I don't know what you're talking about. Let somebody else do it, I don't want to pay. People are not going to save people if we're going to say, you have to pay. So Chazal instituted, you don't have to, you're exempt from paying when you're involved in saving others. But is this really the same? Maybe not. The Shulchan Aruch is talking about a person who is going to save someone. You see Reuven running with a gun after Shimon. This guy didn't have anything. He had a wallet. We say that when you're involved in saving somebody and you break something, you don't have to pay. But here he wasn't involved in saving her. This guy was not a threat. He didn't have a gun, he didn't have a bomb. He had his wallet. So why are you tearing his shirt? But maybe it is relevant to us. Because he did save everybody. There was a lot of people there waiting. And he did save them. They were all panicking. They were all afraid. Saving from a panic is also called saving. But more than that, it's Shulchan Aruch Or Achaim Siman Tafrei Shiud Chet 618 in Hilchot Yom HaKippurim. There we learn, if somebody comes to us in Shul, he says, I don't feel well, I don't feel well, should I drink? We are not doctors, but there's no doctor in Shul. So we look at him and we say, yeah, you don't look good. You should drink, he should drink. Who gave us permission? We're not doctors. When there are no professionals around, we become the professionals. When there are no professionals, not ish, when there's no professionals, Hashem gave us the authority to decide like professionals. The bodyguard, the security guy is not here. He went for lunch. We become the security officials. And you have to listen to us. ตัวนี้มันเอาส่งหลังคาโอมินอายุอายุยมกิปูร์ก็เอ่อเอ่อชุดข้างนอกสิมันจะกลับมาส่งมาเกิดตั้งเฟรชชูสเกตโอเคไ
ดอกเตอร์โบอินอเวนอเวนดูซูยาปิเทอิซอดาวันดิทานะปิโอนะอาซูจากุนาอิซูดอซูเปียนเตอะเมตาระเฮอิมตาระเฮอิจุนปิเ
So the Gemara teaches, if you disgrace the clothing, you're not going to benefit from them. That's why I'm asking, will this guy benefit from them? But what do we want from David HaMelech? It was a pikuach nefesh. And it helped. So what did he do wrong? Why does it mean, why, why does the Gemara say that he disgraced the clothing? He did what he needed to do to save himself. <coughs> So the Yuni Yaakov explains, you know what he did wrong? He cut 15 centimeters. Why didn't you cut only 10? Why did you cut extra 5 centimeters? The Ben Ishai says, you know what he did wrong? Why did you have to cut it right in the corner and nullify it? from being obligated in the mitzvah of tzitzit. Yeah. Take a little the other part. Why specifically there? So that's why he was charged, but that's only David Amelech. Because he is so, such a tzaddik, Hashem judges him fav- differently. <laughs> but this guy, in our case, he tried to save a life. I think when he gets older, all the clothes will still work for him and he's not going to be harmed at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you're lying. You weren't near me. You're just saying that. But when he has a piece of his jacket and he proves him I was so close to you I could have used the knife to kill you. Now Shaul will believe him and he did. Like what? The commentators didn't explain like what you're saying. <laughs> I like what you're saying. But the commentators decided that that was the right thing to do. But the problem, potential problems was either that he cut a little too much or he cut the wrong part of the garment. Let's end with one more question and then a thought about Hanukkah. You know, there was so much chesed that we saw and we still see so many organizations and so many people just donating and giving. There were some people who went down south a month and a half ago when the war started and they gave the soldiers 2,000 cities, 2,000 sefer tehillim and 2,000 pairs of tefillim. Real tzaddikim, great tzaddikim. The soldiers, the secular ones, and the religious ones are all taking it. But there's one problem, little problem. One of the soldiers is not Jewish. Mm-hmm. And he sees that all his friends are taking this, and they explain to him, this is guarding, this is shmirah, this is going to protect us. He says, I also want, I also want the tefillin. I also want the tzitzit, I want the tefillin. So these guys are asking, am I allowed to give a non-Jew that feeling, that it's it, and the feeling. I let the time tell a hot hola so. I'm a hot a bon wa hobolo, hobolo young. A bon a kia so kere so. I let a lot of what to send them me for my spay hola. I let a vet the music to so so young. I piam said you. It's your own look. I let not be ending here. I let a question do it. I let 
Let's start with Tehilim. We have Tehilim, Tzitzit, Tfilin. Let's start with Tehilim. Any problem giving the Sefer Tehilim to the Goy? Tehilim to Zentel Holga Pedio Mutar Ahitam. Can you read? Tehilim to Zentel Holga Zentel Holga Pedio Mutar Ahitam. They have their own version. Can we give them our version of the Tehilim? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Everybody agrees? You know, Uvam, Tehilim to Zentel Holga Pedio Mutar Ahitam. It's okay, Uvam. I also agree. Huh? Why? What's Tehilim? Tehilim is songs of praises and thank you to Hashem. The Goy also has to praise Hashem. It's chapters of belief in Hashem that he is also commanded on. No problem to give the Tehilim to the Goy. No problem. Songs of praise and thank you to Hashem. No problem. <coughs> what about the tzitzit? Can you give tzitzit to an anzi? No. Why not? And therefore, do you remember that he is working for you? He is going to fight now and risk his life for you. You don't want to give him to No, because it's only for a unit. True, but he's saying, I see that you guys are taking it, and you're taking it because it's going to protect you. I also want. Are you saying, no? He's going to fight for you, risk his life, and you're saying, no, you're not going to get to it. Is that what you're saying? Is it? Yeah. A guy is not allowed to do mitzvot? But but it's like it's like a we find a special it's very unique capital punishment but do we find it by other mitzvot? so you don't like it anyone has a problem with giving <laughs> that's it's it to the what's that? you don't want to <laughs> why not? because this mitzvah is given to the Jews. Right. Only to the Jews. All mitzvot except for seven were given to us. So you don't want to give them anything. But they're not giving. They can choose to daven or to pray or not. The Elim of chapter of belief in Hashem is also commanded to believe in Hashem. There's no problem to give them. I think, what you're, I think what you're saying, what you're saying, and probably what you're saying is, you pres- both of you probably last night looked at Shuhana Uch Oachaim, Siman Chaf Seif Bed, and you saw what it says there. Right? Yeah, for sure. Shuhana Uch says, You're not allowed to give tzitzit to a nanju. Even to deposit it with the nanju for, short, for, for a long time. Why not? A unique reason. Not the reason you said. Very unique, very interesting. It's brought in the Gemara Masechet Menachot and the Shulchan Aruch says and the Mishnah Bura explains. In yesteryears, people used to travel by themselves. Nobody had cars. You go out of town and you walk and you walk. It's kind of dangerous. So you don't want to walk by yourself. When you see somebody else, you're going to ask him to join you. If you see somebody wearing a tzitzit, you're going to think, oh, he's a Jew just like me. Come, you want to walk together? The guy says, Sure. You start walking by yourselves, out of town, nobody's there, you know what he's going to do to you? He's going to take out a knife and stab you and kill you. And that's why you're not allowed to give a tzitzit to an anju. That's what Gemara says. ויצא <laughs> Is this relevant to us? I don't think so. Because the Mishnah Bura already says there that the Chaye Adam, hundreds of years ago, said this is not relevant in our times. In our times, in normal places, an Anjou doesn't take a knife and stabs the Jew just because he is different than him. It doesn't happen by us. Therefore, this reason doesn't apply anymore. 
And remember, this soldier is fighting for us. He is risking his life for us. And therefore, it should be no problem to give the tzitzit to this soldier. But what about the tefillin? Can we give a tefillin to a person who is not so Jewish? You don't like it. For the same reason. You like it? No. No tefillin. Anyone wants to disagree? Oh, we are unanimous on this one. No tefillin. Hmm? You probably yes. didn't see the Rambam last yeah. night when you look in the Shulchan Aruch. My view is, uh, will the real powers of tefillin and tzitzitiva uh, really to the going? I don't know if it's going to help him or not, but can I give it to him? The Rambam Melchot Melachim, chapter Yud, Halacha Yud, says, if a guy wants to do a mitzvah, any mitzvah, we don't stop him. He wants to do the sukkah, let him say the sukkah. He wants to shake the rulav, let him shake the rulav. Hanukkah candles, let him light. He wants to do shiru haraket, whatever mitzvah he wants, we don't stop him. According to the Rambam. They can do it, they can do it. A goy wants to sit at home and eat matzah and do a Passover, we don't stop him. Shabbat is unique. But any other mitzvah says the Rambam, if a goy wants to do it, we do not stop him. He can even say a bracha. According to that, do we have a problem giving it? No. But there is a radbaz. The radbaz there on the Rambam says, I agree with the Rambam, except three mitzvot. They have too much kedusha. Not fitting for the non-Jews body. What mitzvot are those? Mezuzah, Shizim. Sefer Torah, and Tfili. According to the Ramba, to the Radbaz, we cannot give the Tfilin to this person. But what we're saying, based on the Rambam, <coughs> is that the boy can decide to do things for himself, not to be giving to him. But we said before, it's it, we have no problem giving it to him. Here, according to the Radbaz, since it has too much Kedusha, it's not fitting for him, you can't, you can't give him. However, even though we said that, the Rema in Shulchan Aruch Yoridea Reish, Tzadi Aleph Seif Bet says, you're not allowed to sell a mezuzah to an Anjou. But, if it's going to cause animosity, Eva, Hatred and it's dangerous, you're allowed to sell them. Here, think about it. This soldier is holding a weapon and he's going to fight for you. He's going to save you. He's risking his life. And you don't want to give me this feeling? Do you remember I have a gun? You still don't want to give it to me? <laughs> Is it a good idea? It can cause big time animosity. And therefore, in this case, even that feeling we will give him. Okay. So say it's a problem to add Mirama <laughs> Zentir, 
Boyita poiti din tai din mona hiya di. Pasi sana pelo wa hiya le. Tungu wa amazo nu le lu nu mo tei kenai ta. Ni. Like the, when the sages had to write the Kamsha Poshitara for um, Alexander uh, some and they translated it to Greek yeah, but like they wrote they didn't write mm. it in like black ink but they wrote it in gold who said that? I just read it from a church yeah but so how, how are you comparing it? he just wanted to translate it he didn't want a Sefer Torah that he's going to read in Shul he wanted to know what the Torah is about in his language and even though you weren't allowed to, they had special permission because it was very dangerous. If the king says, do it, and you don't do it, it can be problematic. Similar in that that it can cause hatred and animosity. If these guys would call us ahead of time, before they went down to Aza, we would say, maybe take out the parashiyot from the tefillin, give them empty boxes. But since they got stuck there, last minute, and they says, give it to me, we can give it. We can give them the tefillin. <laughs> Imagine that we get to see our grandfather and grandmother Matityao and the family who went and fought the Greeks. You realize the Greeks is the biggest army. It's like the United States and Russia and Ukraine together and you have a family of 13 kids 13 people saying come let's fight them it's ridiculous America Russia Ukraine Imagine we get to see them and ask, Grandfather, Grandmother, what were you thinking? <laughs> there was no chance. Why did you do it? And, and you know it wasn't the first time they tried to do this to us the Egyptians tried to do this when we were by the ocean by the sea it doesn't say that the Jews all took weapons and swords and tried to fight we dive into Hashem Haman tried to kill us all does it say that the Jews got together and formed an army and let's fight no, we just daven. So, grandfather, why did you decide to take a sword and start fighting? Why didn't you daven? Like in the time of Paro, in the time of Haman. For all we need, had to meet good words. I had got a Hana to be Masana. No, it had to meet good words. If you evolve it, down among the vetties. Haman enables our good words. If you evolve it, you saw Homer down among the vetties. Two in Munayo Hanuka. Greek they were able to talk good words. Town among town or happy, happy, beating out town among Lotia. Rebbe Khanan Vasiman, who was a Talmud, a student of the Chafetz Chaim, explained. Paro and Haman wanted to kill us, to kill us, to destroy us, to get rid of us, to get rid of our bodies. The Greeks didn't want to kill us. They wanted to destroy us spiritually, to remove us from the connection that we have from the Torah, the connection that we have to Hashem. When you want to be successful in spirituality, you have to give over your spirituality. You have to be willing to give over your nefesh. You have to be willing to die for it. Itta <laughs> 
Because what is spirituality? It's a glow, it's a light from Hashem that He gives and bestows on us. If you want to get this special light, you have to be willing to give over your neshama, which is spiritual, and Hashem bestows on you spiritual light. When I think of you and I see you and I know Rav Rachamim for how many years? I think of you guys as the Hashmonaim of our times. What you went through the Mesirut Nefesh you displayed back in India not just here in the last two months what you did for Hashem <coughs> you were giving over your Neshama you're saying Baruch Hu, all I want is to connect to you on the highest level possible and because of that when I come here and that's why I'm so happy to come and see you guys there's a special mm-hmm. light that radiates from your face there's a special glow you are saturated with spirituality because when Hashem sees that people want to connect with Him, He bestows special grace and special light on them, which I see when I come and see your faces. <laughs> ในเซนามเตอะอินเดียอานอมไลวาคุนาซูลากาวลัมปาเกนเทตานอมเซนวาวาปะเทนาเดียปะเทนตะกิกุยซอนดิงปานนันฮอลวาปันนะซาตานัน